and welcome back to the Tackle Share YouTube channel. I'm Alicia, and if you're a new angler, you're more than likely to start off fishing with the good old-fashioned worm on a hook. Now, almost any fish is attracted to any worm on a hook, but I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks on how to properly hook that worm to target specific species, as well as maximize your time fishing and the worms you've bought. All right, now you can see in my hand, I have two different hooks, two different sizes, but they're both essentially the same hook that's gonna serve the same purpose. On the back of the shank of the hook, so the length of the hook here, that's called the shank, you can notice very carefully, and I might have to show you a close up later, there's barbs on the back of that, and they're called bait holders. They're, hold, they're sticking out and protruding so that when I put bait onto the hook, it's gonna grab hold of that and keep it from sliding off. Now, of course, there's two different sizes here, which is going to have two different applications. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to refer to this one as my pan fishing hook. It's probably a size six. And, um, and this one is, I'm going to refer to as my bass fishing hook, which is probably about a size one hook. And in reality, like I said earlier, any fish will bite onto any, um, hook with a worm on it, but I'm going to show you how you can, you know, invest your time or your resources into hooking your worm properly in order to get the success or the outcome that you're looking for. All right, so I'm going to start off with my pan fishing presentation. I'm going to reach into my little bucket of worms and they are very lively. I just picked those up this morning. Um, very, very lively. And you can see I'm going to use the tail for this portion. And these are called night crawlers. I should I should start off with, these are called night crawlers. They're very big worms. You can, for pan fishing, get smaller worms. I think they're called red wigglers. They're not as easy to get at your, you know, like your local Canadian Tire, but you can get them at specialty bait shops. I find it completely fine just to take a night crawler like this and kind of break it into a couple pieces, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take the end piece. I'm going to say about, you know, two inches about, because they do kind of wiggle around and get a little bit long. So I'm going to pinch them off with my nail there, like just like this. Put the other half back in. Hopefully he does not escape. And then I'm going to take that half there. Wiggling around like lots of fish are going to love that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my hook and I'm going to poke it in, not at the very, very end, but I'm going to poke it in, uh, you know, a couple segments below that, if it'll let me. Got a trailer come in here. And then I've poked it in like that. You can see just like this. And I'm not gonna leave it like that because if that goes in the water, the panfish are just gonna nibble at the end here and they're just gonna pull that right off. And what I wanna do is I wanna keep them invested. So I'm gonna turn this around and I'm gonna try and thread my hook. Keep that worm on and I'm gonna thread down the length of that worm until I get to right about the very, very end of it. Not quite all the way to the end. So you can see now I've threaded the worm I've threaded the worm here so that it's got a little bit up at the top. Most of the shank of the hook is covered in worm and there's a little leading tail at the very, very end, which going through the water is really going to entice a fish. So that's what we're going to be doing. That's all you need to do to hook up a panfish rig. It's really important to have it dangle off a little bit like that because as it goes through the water, it's going to look more natural, like a normal um, situation. If you ball it up, Sometimes the worms, um, sometimes those fish won't suck it back and it's really not what you're going to be. A fish will get it, but you may get more nibbles than if they see this natural flowing worm, they're going to be enticed and grab it all the more. Now for your, um, for hooking up a fish, and I said this is, I was calling this the bass hook. Um, this way is something you may want to put a little bit more worm on this hook. Now I have the other half of that worm. Um, I may use all of it. I may use just a little bit shy of that. So I have another piece, but I'm going to make sure I've got the, the, the protruding, the other end, the head, the anterior end of that uh, worm. So this one, I'm going to take it and I'm actually just going to thread it as if I was sewing. So across the tissue, across the tissue, and I continually keep putting pressure on it and feeding it through. So it's got a, a larger mass on, a larger mass on that hook, just like this. Again, leaving the protruding tail at the very, very end, if you need to push it up a little bit, to just try and give it the same kind of presentation, but more worm on the hook to help a, uh, a larger bass suck that back and really, because they're going to want a larger presentation. It's more appealing. They're going to take it back in one foul swoop. Um, 
and that's what a bass will be doing. Now, like again with a panfish, they're gonna see this smaller presentation and do the same thing. But if there's a long amount of worm hanging off of here, they may just come along and just nibble little pieces and it's just gonna frustrate you. You're gonna be setting the hook, putting the, putting the worm through the weeds a little bit more because it's going to be doing more things. So those are the two ways to hook up your worm to help you catch more success and target the fish you want. Now, one thing I want to add here, I finished the video basically and then realized I should add this little content. These setups are both uh, typically if you would have a bobber on it ahead of time and that's why you'd have like this wiggly little end here. Now, um, putting the pan fishing rig set aside. If you did want to go ahead and fish for let's say catfish or carp, in a situation like that you could use a worm balled up like this but I would actually suggest to put it all on the hook just like this, a big old ball or you could even have used the whole entire worm and it just basically sits on the bottom of the water with a couple sinkers on it and that is something that is just a lie in wait lure presentation that you just wait for a catfish or a carp to come on over and, and fill around and suck that right back and then that's what you're going to be doing. You um, could completely do the exact same thing. Weave as much worm onto the hook as you can, but this type of fishing is something that takes a lot of patience and is not necessarily something I would suggest, uh, maybe wouldn't e expect a new angler to go out carp fishing or, or catfish fishing just because it takes a lot of patience to wait, to lie and wait for that lure um, to get sucked back by, you know, an opportunistic fish. But if you're bass fishing, um, again, these setups would probably have a bobber on it and making sure you leave that tail out so that in the water it has a natural action. All right, let's go do put this a little bit into practice. All right, so I'm gonna start off with my panfish presentation. You can actually see my worm slid down there a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and correct that. Make sure it's hiding and sitting like that. And that's what I'm gonna throw it to the water. I already saw a um, pumpkin seed swim by, so I'm hoping I'm gonna catch one of those guys. All right, and like I said, any fish is, about, uh, is bound to bite onto any hook with a worm on it. And right here, we've caught ourselves a smallmouth bass. Um, but he is a smaller fish, very similar to the size of a panfish. So maybe I should have prefaced it by saying the size of the fish's mouth. But either way, caught myself a nice little smallmouth. He ate my hook nicely. Now, don't forget to send your photos in for our Fish Along with Tackle Share initiative. I'm going to send in this bad boy right here. <laughs> that one's going to be going um, onto the page, but every fish you catch, make sure you send it in because it could help you win um, one of our prizes for the end of the month. So we're going to let this guy go. Woo! He was surprised. So while I'm waiting again uh, for another fish to bite, I should say those two presentations um, were kind of generally speaking, any fish is going to bite onto a hook with a worm. It's just a matter of, you know, hooking them properly to invest your time and your resources wisely. All right, and that's it for our video today to show you how to hook a worm to invest, you know, your time wisely and your resources wisely, either using a panfish setup like this or a bass fishing setup like that. All right, I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and tap that notification bell to keep more fishing content coming your way. And if you haven't already done so, send in your photos to our Fish Along with Tackle Share initiative where you can win more prizes.